It's one of the worst things you can eat, and it's almost impossible to avoid. If you eat any processed food... <laughs> Sorry, I'm having to laugh. <laughs> if you're eating any processed foods, you're going to be eating seed oils. And he advocates for replacing seed oils with beef tallow, which is in the UK is referred <laughs> to as dripping, which is... What's funny? Am I missing something? There is absolutely no evidence that is credible evidence when interpreted in the correct way to show seed oils are harmful. You've had your time with the seed oils are so healthy. We've had enough of the mainstream narrative. Seed oils are great. There's a big debate raging at the moment about seed oils. RFK Jr. say recently, seed oils are one of the most unhealthy ingredients that we have in foods. And the reason they're in foods is because they're heavily subsidized. They're very cheap, but they are associated with all kinds of very serious illnesses, including body-wide inflammation. What's the debate? I don't get it. Why are we still debating this? Which affects all of our health. It's one of the worst things you can eat, and it's almost impossible to avoid. If you eat any processed food. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having to laugh. This is like Nutribolics beyond Nutribolics, but please. He, he said if you're eating any <laughs> processed food, you're going to be eating seed oils. And she finds it funny. Poisoning society is funny. And he advocates for replacing seed oils with beef tallow, which is in the UK is referred <laughs> to as dripping. <laughs> Animal fats, which we've eaten since the beginning of time. <laughs> you know, nutrient dense, stable, great to cook in. Vitamins A, D, E, and K. <laughs> What's funny? Am I missing something? It's pure beef fat and is a saturated fat. Make frying oil tallow again. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get back to what we were doing before everybody was sick. Okay, so seed oils, I think, is at the top of the Nutribolics list. I, I, it blows my mind what you've just read me. I'm sure it does. It seriously blows my mind. I've done lots of research on seed oils. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise she's done lots of research. So I can talk from my own research as well as all the evidence bases out there. there. There is no evidence in terms of nutrition science. There is absolutely no evidence that is credible evidence when interpreted in the correct way to show seed oils are harmful. So she can interpret it in the correct way. How about looking at the hard science? How about looking at that? What is a seed oil? So a seed oil is an oil from a seed. Okay. So The most toxic part of any plant. The most common seed oils in the UK is rapeseed oil, which is also known as canola oil in the US and many other countries, followed by sunflower oil. The most common seed oils in the US are soybean oil, followed by rapeseed or canola oil, followed by sunflower seed. All catastrophic. Stay away from them. Seed oil. There's about three or four arguments that people use to say that seed oils are bad for us. And if you go onto social media, I mean, this is a perfect example of night and day between scientific evidence and what's on social media. If you go on social media, seed oils are toxic. Seed oils are going to give you Alzheimer's. Seed oils are going to give you cancer. Seed oils are going to kill you. You look at the evidence, it's totally the reverse. What evidence? Now, you can have sensible, boring scientists like me say seed oils. You're a scientist? Seed oils are really good for you. You could put that as one of your mm. assets or whatever you call it, or adverts for this. Mm. So we could say seed oils are really good for you, Stephen. Or I could tell you, seed oils are toxic. They're going to kill you. Everyone's trying to kill us with seed oils. What's going to get more clicks? You've had your time with the seed oils are so healthy. We've had enough of the mainstream narrative. Now it's our time to try and improve health. Probably the toxic seed oil narrative. Exactly. And so the sensible science, there's no silver bullet. There's no, like, you know, crazy inflammatory argument. The sensible... There absolutely is. Science isn't going to get the clicks. So unfortunately, the voices of reason, and often it comes from boring academics like myself, not saying other academics are boring, but sensible academics like myself that give... Sensible. <laughs> the ones that laugh like that when they hear about food... And then poisons. <laughs> the, you know, the balance. We don't get a voice. We're not being... You've had your voice. ...heard, which is one of the reasons that, you know, I wanted to come on this show. Right, I was going to say, you have got a voice because you're on Diary of a CEO. So what are you complaining about? Joe, ...because of the misinformation. And we have to get the voice of reason out there. We have to get the voice of reason. So things like that to do with seed oils are not what's dominating the headlines. I'm really looking forward to this voice of reason. So what... People say in terms of seed oils is, firstly, our intake of seed oils has increased 100-fold the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Right, and we've only ever consumed seed oils as human beings for a century. That's it. 
not a good thing. And with that increase in seed oil intake, so has cancer increased, so has cardiovascular disease increased, so has obesity increased, so has Alzheimer's, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So- yes, <laughs> sounds like the kind of science that you guys love. It must be to do with the seed oils. Well, what else has changed in that fifty years? We're more sedentary. We. So what? That actually has very little to do with health outcomes. Loads of these other, these heavily processed foods that got all of these other ingredients in. Like the seed oils that are also heavily processed. You know, the sugar, the this, the that, so much else. Sugar and the this and the that. You're a scientist. Wow. This has changed. You know, you can't put it all down to the fact that at that point in time, seed oils were also changing. We also... Well, it's the sort of science that you love, isn't it? So know that about 60% of the seed oil that we eat is actually in these heavily processed unhealthy foods. Seed oils are heavily processed foods. So it's the first argument they say. It's, and you see these beautiful figures that they put out where you see on one axis the intake of seed oil. You see on the other axis, um, you know, uh, o- over time you'll see, uh, for example, like rates of cancer. And you see rates of cancer or rates of cardiovascular disease going up linearly. Right. It's right up your street by the sounds of it with the intake of seed oil. But we have to think what else has changed in that time. The other are... The this, the that, um, the sugar. Arguments that they use are theoretical arguments based on biochemical pathways. And I spend an hour teaching this to our undergraduates and I'm not going to bore you with that biochemical pathway. (laughs) There's no hope. But they talk about the ratio of... Um, a particular fatty acid, which is omega-6, which is found in high levels in seed oils. Linoleic acid is the omega-6 fat she's talking about, which we don't need any of, by the way. Arachidonic acid from animal foods, we need that, very small amounts. If we don't have that, we convert linoleic acid over to arachidonic acid. (laughs) You're being very vague. And omega-3, which is another fatty acid. And they talk about how having lots of seed oils changes this ratio, makes it's already changed in the bottle. That that oil in the bottle, omega-6 trumps omega-3. Way too much. We evolved on levels of one to one. <laughs> so yes, this is one argument, sure, but you're also missing the fact that it's unstable and it's an oxidized linoleic acid, which is the plant form of omega-6 fatty acid. Uh, this pro-inflammatory state because it increases a particular downstream chemicals, et cetera, et cetera. Well, what particular chemicals downstream? Let's get into it, because you haven't said anything yet. What we know from kind of theoretical biochemical pathways and enzymes, etc. Which ones? Doesn't actually play out in humans. We're so clever. We have all of these mechanisms in place. Well, hmm, we can be. We have lots of potential, but so does my own. Sorry. To control inflammation, to control oxidative stress, to control downstream. Oxidative stress. Think about it. Oh my goodness, the irony. Seed oils oxidize. That's oxidative stress. You're damaging your LDL particles, for example. Neuroinflammation, damage your liver. But hey, seed oils are great. Dream impacts of foods. And so this argument that is also used to say that omega-6 fatty acids, so the main fat that's found in many of these seed oils, is pro-inflammatory. Is- it is not supported by any evidence it's not what evidence supported by tightly controlled clinical trials they're not tightly controlled ever you cannot control for human beings if anything it's shown to be anti-inflammatory that levels of inflammatory let me guess it lowers cholesterol so that's a good thing inflammatory circulating molecules actually reduce and yet they use this kind of theoretical argument or what they've seen in a petri dish for example or in a test tube so where what you haven't said anything yet? Where does this narrative come from? Where, where did it originate from? That seed oils were were toxic. Was it just one of those things that just snowballed? I think it's one of those things that snowballed, and I think it. <laughs> we are countering the dangerous narrative that animal fats are bad and plant oils are good. What is this all about? We're going round and round like a dog chasing its tail. It does fit in with the whole. Uh, argument that people are using against ultra-processed food, it does... Seed oils are an ultra-processed food. It does fit in with other, other narratives that are going on. Like what? You haven't said anything yet. I think some people can be very clever in cherry-picking research. Mm-hmm. So there's a sub- study called the Sydney Heart Study, 
And in this study, this was done in the 70s, and this is a study that's used often to advocate for the toxic effects of seed oils. And in this study, uh, males that had had a heart event or a heart attack of sorts uh, were uh, randomly allocated to either increase um, their omega-6, so this particular type of fatty acid that we is in seed oils. Linoleic acid, yes. Um, in their diet by having lots of seed oil. Mm -hmm. Or they were asked to just follow their normal diet, which is quite high in saturated fat. And what they found... <laughs> How would you know? Oh, just the normal diet that everybody else was on is just high in saturated fat. So scientific. found is those that increased their seed oil intake went on to have worst health outcomes. The kind of science that you guys love. Now, the problem with that is, is that in those days, the majority of seed oils underwent an industrial process called partial hydrogenation. And partial hydrogenation... Increases trans fats. We don't do that anymore, yes. But the study at the time was on that, and that's how it was at the time. ...produces a very harmful fat called trans fats. They were eating this seed oil in the form of a margarine or fat spread that had undergone... Part may as well eat antifreeze. ...partial hydrogenation and therefore was full of trans fats. Trans fats increase cholesterol. Trans fats increase inflammation. Trans fats are bad. So she's still under the impression that cholesterol's the bad guy, you know. It's only vital just to be alive. It only coats every cell in the body trillions and we make all of our steroid and sex hormones out of it. The brain's made out of saturated fats and cholesterol. But hey, we want to lower that if we can. That's why they are not in our food supply anymore. And so of course that seed oil is going to cause worse health outcomes. But it's Right, tell us about today's seed oils. It's not how seed oil is consumed now. And so it's that clever check. Do you mean how it's processed now? Because it's still heavily processed. Every picking of evidence that often supports a lot of the nutribolics that's out there. With all these studies out there and with some studies having less rigour and studies that aren't don't have sort of the randomised control element or... Poorly randomised, never controlled. Or what's the other term for a study where they do, um, they look at like 50 studies at once? So Meta-analysis, just a load of crap basically all piled together. They're meta-analysis. Meta so study, yeah. we do randomised control trials. So these will be trials where there's always a control arm. We'll randomly allocate some people to an intervention like seed oils and some people to a control. Could be saturated fat, could be beef tallow. That's been yeah. done. And then we look at different health outcomes. We follow them over a period of time. Or it could be that I ask you for a month to have seed oils and then next month have... A month. Our genetic package is 300 to 350,000 years old. She wants to troll someone on something for a month. Okay. Beef tallow, for example, and then we'll look at different health outcomes, compare how you responded to one versus the other. And then what we do as scientists is... If there's enough of these... It's not real science because you are not trying or even attempting to disprove your hypothesis. It's clinical trials, these randomised control trials. We put them all together into what's called a meta-analysis and we look, what does the meta-analysis show? So, for example... Whatever it says, that's what I do. I, I forget everything else, the hard science, the history. Let's just say whatever this shows. Well, for seed oils, there's meta-analysis, for example, of um, about 42 uh, randomised control trials where they compare seed oils to other fats, showing consistently that there is no harmful benefit, that actually there's a reduction in cardiovascular disease because the particular fat that's in seed oil has a really potent cholesterol-lowering effect. There you go. You jump into conclusions again. You're under the impression that we should be lowering our cholesterol. The reason why it does this, seed oils contain plant sterols, which mimic cholesterol because they're molecularly quite similar. And so it lowers cholesterol. You don't want to do that ever. It's not a good thing. So it's actually beneficial for our health. Yet yeah, beef... No. Beef tallow is full of saturated fat. Oh my goodness, it's full of saturated fats, guys. We've only eaten it since the beginning of time. It kind of made us who, who we are as humans. But we want to stop that now because this pile of crap says we should stop that. Brilliant. I'm a sensible scientist, by the way. It's full of palmitic acid, which is a particular type of saturated fat that we know is bad for us. Mm. There has been studies and these... We know, she says, we know is bad for us. Terrible, absolutely terrible. You are not a scientist. Studies were done many years ago when uh, beef tallow was actually used, comparing seed oils with beef tallow. Yeah, when we used to use it and when we weren't so sick. It's amazing, isn't it, how that happens? It was always well, came out better. Seed oils always reduce cholesterol compared to beef tallow, reduced inflammation, etc. You're basing your whole argument on a fallacious belief. You need to start from scratch. Reduce cardiovascular mm -hmm. risk factors. You're very powerful. Risk factors. Again, 
Poor choice of words. Cause and effect statement. Terrible. Passionate about this. I am, because I've researched. As a research active scientist. She's done the research. (laughs) Where I've run randomised control trials. And I tell you what, you sweat blood and tears. I love my research, but it's blimmin' hard work doing a, a clinical trial. You know, getting ethical approval, recruiting people, changing people. And then poisoning them with seed oils for a month. Running dietary studies is really hard because it's not a case of giving them a pill. If I'm going to give you seed oil, I've got to think, well, how am I going to do that? What <laughs> how will I poison my patients? Am I, well, instead of what, what am I taking out of your diet to give you that? How am I going to make sure the rest of your diet is controlled? So once you've run studies yourself and you've sweated that blood and tears, and then you see this m- neutrobolics, this misinformation out there, it's really bloody frustrating. Inten- you are the misinformation. You may even be the disinformation. It's very feasible that you've been bought and paid for. I don't know who you're working for, but this is just diabolical. In years time, I might be totally wrong. <laughs> All of these trials show... You've been wrong, love. And seed oils are fine. I might be wrong in 10 years' time. I mean, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> she doubts it, right? The narcissist. I do apologise if I've come across a little bit short and sharp. But I am fed up of hearing this stuff. We're all trying our best to push the right information out there to be as accurate and helpful as possible. And then you get people like this coming along. It's terrible. And this is allowed, you know. You've certainly got a voice because you're on the Diary of a CEO podcast and you're going to reach hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people with this horrible message. Let me know what you guys think. I will see you soon.